In augmented edit mode, the hierarchy provides tools for selecting and organizing the objects in your model. The inspector allows you to modify the properties of selected objects. To look at our hierarchy and inspector, we need to go into our augmented edit mode. We'll go ahead and open that back up. And as a reminder, our hierarchy is this list over on the top right, and our inspector is the box below that, which we'll populate as soon as we select something. We can organize the hierarchy in any way we want. We can drag channels around. They don't have to be in numerical order. Um, I do have some sorting options here. So unsorted will remember whatever order I put it in. I can sort alphabetically A to Z, or Z to A, or back to my original unsorted. I have a menu here where I can add a folder. It's gonna put it down here at the bottom. And I can name that folder something like moving lights. And then I could organize my hierarchy so that all my moving lights were in that folder. And to do that, I would simply drag those into that folder. So we'll grab 112 and 111. I'm holding down control in order to multiple select and drag that into that folder. And if I expand it, I can see those lights are now inside that folder. We can also rename any item in here. So for our truss, I'm gonna double click on that. And let's go ahead and rename that FOH truss. So it's, we know which one it is. It is possible to rename channels here. So be careful doing that because once you name something, it may be difficult to find that channel number again. I can also assign channels to an object here. So I'm going to select all of my fixtures that are on my front of house truss and drag them onto that object in the hierarchy. And that will create a folder in which they live. So let's find 101 through 105. Again, I'm using my control key to do multiple selection. And I also need channels one through 10. Now that those are all selected, I'm going to drag those down on top of my front of house truss. And if I expand it, I can see those channels are now all associated with that object. I'm gonna go ahead and move my camera so that I can see our truss. Let's get out here so you can see the whole thing. Note that when I select things in the model, they're also automatically selected in the hierarchy. Because I've associated my channels with the truss, when I select that truss, it's going to also select all those channels underneath it. I do have the option to still select one channel within the truss. And again, I can select that in the model or in the hierarchy. So here, if I select 101, I'm gonna hold shift this time, and click 105, and it will select all five of those. For now, let's only select 105, and we're gonna come down here to the inspector and look at some of the options we have there. We have our name field. So here we can also change the name of an object. There's a padlock here. If I click that padlock, I can no longer make any changes to that object. I can't move it, I can't scale it. Uh, this is pretty useful for things you know you don't want to mess with. So for example, your scenic model, once it's in the correct location, you may want to lock it so that you don't accidentally select it and move it around or scale it. For the moment, I'm going to unlock that. I can also hide an object. So if I click that, that object is going to disappear. That only applies to the visibility in the model. I have not deleted that fixture or removed it from my show file. We'll click that back on here. Keep in mind, if objects are associated with other objects, such as our truss, so if we select our truss and I click off visibility, all the lights also associated with that truss will become invisible. For now, let's turn that back on. We also have some rotational quick keys here. To take a look at those, let's go ahead and add an object to our library. So I want to grab a piece of furniture. I'm gonna use this desk chair here. Let's pull that in and we can move our camera so that we can see what's going on. So with that object selected, if I rotate it on the X axis with these 90 degree buttons, it's going to spin like that. Here's our Y axis and our Z axis, it will spin around that way. These are just quick ways to move objects in 90 degree increments. We also have a move object to ground plane button here. So how this works is let's go ahead and move our chair a bit. Uh, let's give it a Z position of five feet. So it's up in the air. And so now if I click that button, it will simply snap the bottom of that object to our ground plane. At the bottom of our inspector, 
is a tags box. Let's go ahead and select a fixture. We'll grab 122 here. So you'll see there are some tags already there. Some of these are data about the fixture that are from the database when you patch it. Others like overstage wash there, it is pulling from our patch database fields. So that is a field that we have manually entered at some point in the past. Let's dolly back and come up to our front of house truss. I'm gonna go ahead and tag all of my front of house truss conventionals. So in my hierarchy, I'm gonna select one through 10 and I'm going to add a tag here that just says FOH. Now each of those objects has that tag as well. So what that lets me do is I can come up to my hierarchy, type in FOH and anything that has FOH associated with it is going to populate. So the trust does because it's in the title. Channel 105 through 101 do because it's in their tag. They have a tag that came in from patch that says FOH mover spot. And then channels one through 10 just have that FOH tag that we just added. So that's a good way to quickly search your hierarchy, especially once you have a lot of objects in there. To remove a tag, I can simply click the X in the tag box there. That's all we need to do in here for now. So I'm going to click done and apply changes.